Welcome to episode 12 of Cowboy Bebop. Last time there was a mutant lobster, and everybody got poisoned, and then they were fine, so I guess something else now. Presumably, they didn't all die, and we won't be continuing a story of how to get them healed. I'm assuming they were just fine, and so now we'll probably never mention it again, and we'll just do something else this time. So, uh, let's get into it. It was a very self-contained episode, so who knows what we'll get this week. Uh, let's go. I'm gonna watch it and talk about it at the end, so let's go ahead and watch in three, two, one. This episode is called, I believe, Jupiter Jazz, Part 1. Never had that. A part 1 and Part 2. So I have no idea. I'm guessing, since we had Ballad of Fallen Angels, Episode 5... Then we had Jet's episode, Ganny Beat Elegy, episode 10. I'm going to guess that episode 15 is going to focus on Faye, and we're going to learn about her past. So until then, we'll see. Got some kind of two-parter going on here. Don't know why. Don't know if it's more character-driven, uh, character-relevant. Or if it's just uh, another episodic story that just happens to be a little longer. We'll see. I still want to see Edward get more involved. She hasn't really done anything much since joining. She ate the lobster. But, you know, I want to see her go on some little adventures. She gave a really good life lesson about following strangers. So here we go. Starting off with the music in a very interesting way already. Where are we right now? It looks really nice. Got some Native American type people. Hmm, where are we going with this? Is this Jupiter? Probably not. It's a gas giant. Don't think you can just hang out on it. But I don't know. It's the future. Shit happens. That looks like Jupiter. Down one of the moons? Or, I don't know. Hey, okay. Callisto. The Red Eye from episode one. So, okay, we've got some uh, more plot relevant stuff. With Vicious. Doesn't seem like the grenade hurt him. This... Council of Elders. The Vans. Yeah, he seems fine after that, uh, grenade. This is interesting. This whole, uh, organization here. What if we got an episode focused just on them? All right. I 
What if we got the episode that was just about them? Who is the dragon in this case? Are we talking about Spike? Are we talking about something else? Because I know the Red Dragon was, like, the name of one of the organizations, but I don't remember all the details. Well, alright, this is interesting. And we're over to the protagonists. Just hanging out, hacking, doing whatever she does. Okay, Faye left. Hey, at least, I mean, that's, you know, that's something. Nice. Good, that's great. Really not really kind of her. Of course she would. But yeah, I mean, at least that's something. Like, hey, I wouldn't be able to do it face-to-face. Uh, -face. So that's saying, like, hey, I care a little bit. It'd be hard for me to do face-to-face. -face. We're just awkward. Especially with the safe and the antifreeze thing. Well, okay. Okay, we're getting some, uh, I was saying to wait for episode 15. But we're getting some serious stuff already in episode 12. Of course, I said we might get a Fey focus in 15. Could still be the case. Might get that right now, too. I don't know. Since she, ah! And she left. This poor dog. <laughs> it is. It's uh, you can't stop the man. Not even a second thought. I don't believe you. Yeah, I don't know if you, again, you can't stop him when it comes to this stuff. Do you really think that would work? I think you're all the lonely one. Well, so long. Says he won't let him come back. I don't, uh, I don't think that's gonna happen. Crows, the blue crow. 
Doesn't look like a great place. People in gas masks all over. And here we have Faye. Last time we had a scene like this, it was the harmonica with the immortal boy. Got his winter coat. Okay, good for you, man. Uh, well, all right. Just it's real fast. I've been under the impression that uh, this woman was dead, but we shall see. Spike was presumed dead by some. Well, can you tell by looking? I guess they can. All right, see if Faye's still there. Yeah, uh, on this planet where everybody's dressed so heavily, they're so cold, she's still wearing that. I know she's indoors right now, but... What? Do do they? Do they say that? Maybe they need to fucking stop taking whatever shit they're taking. Anyway. <laughs> well, all right. Literally everyone else. What did that say? The work which becomes a new genre itself. It will be called Cowboy Bebop. Well, all right. So we've got a place with no women, got all these gas masks, Faye ran away and is here. Vicious is doing stuff. Jet and Ed are just up there on the bebop, I don't know if they'll get involved. Not quite. Don't compare me to that guy. Damn. All right, pretty fucking good. You pissed the man off. Yeah, just leave. You're acting pretty vicious right now.
Look at my big pink fluffy coat. Boy, you're going to piss him off even more. Damn, look at that face there. Well, here he is. Grin. Shit. What is, what is it? Because he's attractive. Sorry, lady, he's not into women. That is how the justice system works. If you're attractive, you don't have to go to jail. It's fine. Well then, let me just uh, bust some skulls while I'm in here. Wanted to kick some dude's ass and... <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> okay, I was just going to say, nobody followed. I'm sorry. All right, can she, can she handle all these people? Uh, I guess we don't get to find out. She seemed confident that she could. I think this couple episodes will be pretty important for Faye. Whatever the hell happens with her and this guy. But there's a lot going on here. I don't know where any of it's going to go. How it's all going to tie together. It's cool that they're all kind of doing their own things. That are all sort of connected. Is it? So why did she take the antifreeze? I understand that. Being with people but still feeling like you're left out or that you're by yourself. You may as well just be by yourself. And that's better. Then of course there's that. Getting close to people is difficult. Because of the fear of losing them.
Gotta say it. Don't want any fairy transformations. She's all sweaty and shit. Yeah, she's uh, she's not doing so well. Who is the the kid? Would that Seems to be a soldier. Vicious? Since they're the ones uh, supposed to be doing the deal. I think Faye knew who Vicious was before episode 5. Because when uh, he showed up there and said his name. She reacted as if she recognized the name. So this is happening again. But a sword to a gunfight, but you got this guy here getting in the way. She said she couldn't promise not to peek. When? What are you talking about? This guy is not standing down. Is he a woman? Oh, shit. Oh, uh... Okay, as unexpected in, ma in many ways, um... Okay, or the... Okay. There's a lot happening. Surprised that he was a woman, then surprised that he's both and or neither. Surprised that we saw boobs just straight out fully in the open. I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, anyway, let's back to... I knew it. I was just about to say, I can see the episode ending right there. And then it did. Well then, uh... Imagine if there wasn't a part two, if that was its own story, and then next week we just never addressed it again. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad there's a part two. So there's probably nothing after the ED, just a preview. So uh, yeah, let's talk about that one. All right, episode 12. I had theorized that uh, episode 15 might be the next kind of big episode. Episode 5, we learned a lot about Spike, and that was the great episode with Vicious. Episode 10, we learn more about Jet. I'm thinking, okay, well, we've got a pattern here. Episode 15 might be something big, maybe about Faye. Maybe we'll learn about her past then, and maybe we still will. But for now, uh, we've already got a pretty big, important storyline going on here. Episode 12 and then 13, since this is only part one of a two-parter. I really didn't know what to expect from a two-parter, but we actually get a lot of focus on a lot of characters. And it's very interesting, and I think there's quite a lot to talk about. It's a slow episode. It's a slow burn. It's a lot of build-up. A lot of tension. A lot of atmosphere and mood setting, which is really good because it takes place on Callisto, one of Jupiter's moons. And just the place being so cold and dark, snowy, and barren, and run down. You see these like unfinished buildings and just a mess everywhere all these people with gas masks are in a depression there's no women there it feels isolated and lonely which is perfect because that's uh, like a major theme of this episode dealing with 
loneliness. We have a conversation about that between Spike and Jet, with Faye and Gren. The characters are all split up, and I really like that, how they were all doing their own things, which were all interesting. But it all also tied together, because you have Spike and Vicious involved. When I saw Vicious at the start of the episode, I was like, oh shit, so we're, we're getting into some serious shit here. Faye with this man Gren, who's trying to make a deal with Vicious. Jet's just kind of alone doing his own thing. Uh, child and dog are just on ship. Whatever, I guess. <laughs> they don't get to come. But yeah, you've got them all doing their own things, separated but tied into this larger plot, and I'm, I'm just waiting for how all the pieces come together. But it did a really good job of setting up this, this lonely feeling. And like I said, it, it was very slow. There were long stretches where I wasn't really saying anything because I'm just kind of letting everything soak in. You get this scene of him just playing the saxophone, and that's something you just kind of want to sit down and just absorb and listen to. The episode takes its time to have scenes like that, just a scene of him playing that or scene of just setting up the setting or small little details in the environment taking its time to to build this up of what is the first two-part storyline that we've gotten and uh i think it does a good job i'm curious to see where the hell all of this is going to go i was caught off guard by uh, the start of this episode because again with vicious Faye leaving, just all the different directions that it went in, and I mean the very start, just seeing this like Native American guy talking about a shooting star being the soul of a, a warrior who has finished his battle. I want to see how that ties into what eventually happens. It seems to uh, be signifying a death. I don't know if that will be next episode or just later on down the line, but that was an interesting way to start it. So, uh, and... <laughs> Also, when Vicious first showed up, I, I was thinking, what if we just kind of got a lot of focus on him and just got an episode surrounding him? And uh, we don't get that. We get a lot of the protagonists in here as well, but we get a lot of information about him and about the Red Dragon Syndicate that we didn't have before. When uh, Spike threw that grenade when he was falling out the window in episode five, I was like, did Vicious get uh, injured at all, get burned or anything? Uh, he seems fine from that. And uh, apparently he was in the military at one point he says he was a titan vet uh titan is a moon i believe so i guess that's where they were stationed he was in the military with this guy gren that we meet in this episode we see like the elders seemingly the people in charge of the red the red dragon syndicate they're called the vans and vicious doesn't seem to care for them and they know that he doesn't and they know how cold he is and he seems to not respect them or like the the hierarchy or just the order of it whatsoever and uh probably wants to get rid of them and take control himself and I, they seem to know that he does and they they tell him a snake can't eat a dragon like you can't do it but uh we'll see we'll see what he, he does what he does uh, he gets paired with this guy lin who's very different from him he who doesn't care about the order of the syndicate are following the rules because they're like, no, nobody can go against the will of the Vans. You can't have your own thoughts. But he's not into that shit. He even tells Lin, you will even have to betray me if you want to survive. He's all about that. But Lin is about honor and being noble and obeying his higher ups and doing what he must do to follow his orders and protect the syndicate and protect Vicious because that's what he has to do here. Even calling Spike, Spike-sama. Because he used to work under Spike, Spike who's not even you know part of this anymore. He still calls him Sama because he's just very much about that nobility and, and respect. So that's really cool, getting that a uh, little bit of information about the Syndicate and about Vicious. And of course, you have Spike going there because of the code name Julia. Just that one tiny little hint that there could be something up with her. Just immediately sends him off. He doesn't at any point have to stop and think about it, give it any kind of second thought. She's involved, Vicious is involved, whatever, I'm going. Like, he cannot be talked out of it, no matter what, and he will not even stop to think about whether it's something he should do. He's just going to go and do it with that tiny little hint. Jet even says, like, that's just a common-ass name. <laughs> um, but he goes anyway. And I really like the argument between Spike and Jet. I like a lot of the conversations they have, and this is another good one, talking about... He's like, well, you know, if you go, you're, you're not coming back. And he says it kind of playfully, like, to try to get Spike not to go. But then when Spike's like, yeah, well, so be it. He's like, what? He's really surprised by that. Because, again, like, 
you should have you should have learned from last time how serious Spike is about this subject matter and how he cannot be stopped when it comes to this. And uh, saying like, ah, oh, you're fine. You got these guys. You're not lonely anymore. And he's like, I thought you were the lonely one. I didn't know you viewed me that way. And they're they're really they're all the lonely ones. They were all lonely and all needed each other and needed companionship. I think. But that was just a really good conversation between the two of them. And Jet does end up going to Callisto as well. We don't see too much of him, just him uh, in this bar with a bunch of, of people with bounties, I guess, because, again, it's just a, a rundown place. People just come here when there's nowhere else to go. Probably a lot of criminals just hanging out here, and I think the bartender thought that Jet was one too, because he's like, don't worry, it's a hideout for people like this, so you're fine. And he's like, what? No, me? I don't know, so... I don't know, maybe you could try capturing some of these guys. Gren's got a big-ass bounty on his head because he apparently escaped from military prison. And the bounty's doubled because uh, Statute of Limitations is expiring soon, so we'll see how Jet gets brought into the whole thing. Bike gets a really good fight scene. That was fun. Being compared to Vicious, or being mistaken for Vicious, uh, instantly pissed him off massively. And then uh, insulting the name of Julia pissed him off even more. That was fun to see him kick those guys' ass. And uh, we get the confrontation... Again, with him and Vicious, where Lin stands in his way and is doing his job in protecting Vicious, where Spike, he doesn't have a problem with Lin, apparently. He doesn't want to shoot him, and Spike ends up being the one who gets shot. And I really like the cutting between the two storylines at the end of the episode, between uh, Spike and FaZe, which I'll talk about after this. But uh, Spike is shot, and as he's laying there in the snow, I just had the feeling the episode is going to end, and it did. Uh, I didn't see any blood anywhere, so I don't know. I mean, obviously he'll be fine. He's the main character. It's only episode 12. But, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really notice any blood. Maybe it grazed him. I'm not sure exactly. But that's where that leaves off. Not too good for him. And Vicious does say that Julia was here, so I'm not sure what the deal is. Just from the little information we've gotten in the past, I had assumed that she was dead. And that Vicious had possibly killed her, and that was what the whole issue was about. Why Spike didn't like him, I, I didn't know what exactly was going on, but I assumed she was dead. She could still be. He could be lying, he could be talking about it in some other sense. Maybe she was here at one point, but is now dead. Spike was, of course, assumed dead by some people, so it wouldn't be too far-fetched to think that she was the same. I don't know what happened to her, but... I don't know. I don't know if Spike thought she was dead, and this is the first time that he has thought, wait a minute, maybe she's not, but uh, we'll see where that goes. So I, I assume she was dead. But now we have Faye. She ran off, took the antifreeze, I'm not sure why, and she took the money, because of course. So they're uh, off on their own now, bunch of heat up in the ship, and you know, she says she doesn't get care about them at all. However, she couldn't even say goodbye to their faces. She says, like, it would be too hard if I had to say it to your face. So, like, what does that imply if not I have some kind of connection to you and it would be difficult for me to say goodbye to you in person? I had to write you this note. Maybe it would just be awkward, especially since she's stealing their shit. Clearly, she does enjoy being with them to some extent and does care. And we get a lot about her. In this episode, because of this relationship she forms with this person, Gren, she almost gets a fight scene. She starts to have one. I really wanted to see just how well she would do against all those guys. Her just being in this kind of bad mood. It's like, I was hoping some people would follow me so I could have a chance to kick some guys' asses. It's just a very, a very good scene in general. Her in the bar, the sax playing, meeting this guy, the fact that there's no women around, and just the attitude she has this whole thing. Also, while being cold and sick the entire time. She doesn't get to have a full fight, though. She gets saved by Gren, who takes her in. And this is... I really want to see where the hell this is all going to go, to, Because they have a really great conversation. And she talks about how, well, if you're going to feel lonely even when you're a part of a group, then you may as well just actually be alone. And I totally understand that. That's pretty personally relatable to me, being in a group of people and yet feeling as if you are still by yourself. You may as well just actually be by yourself. And then, of course... There is the fear of losing people and why you don't want to get close to them because it could end in heartache. And there's so much more to think about and worry about and deal with when you have other people around and uh, whether or not that's worth it. And she tries to tell herself that it's not and she doesn't want to have those people around 
and that she's a loner and that she doesn't need these people. But I think really she's just trying to convince herself. And again, that's pretty personally relatable to me. I really enjoyed that conversation. She has a line where she talks about, like, I'm such a good woman that all the guys end up fighting over me. I wonder if that has any specific connection to her past, like maybe other people that she was close to did in fact fight over her and that ended badly and that's part of the reason why she doesn't like getting close to people. Obviously she's had bad run-ins with many people in the past and does not enjoy getting close to people. She's lost people and that has made her want to be a lone wolf. But yeah, she here's the, the call from Vicious. I'm still not totally sure, but I think she knew who Vicious was before episode 5, because when she saw him in that episode and he said his name, she reacted with some shock, seeming like she had known that name. So I think she knows who he is. She's very shocked by the phone call, seeing him in the photo with Gren, because they were in the military together. And also, the, I like the, the fact that the deal is for the red eye, which was from episode one, so that's a nice callback. And also the, the pictures, there's a little kid in them, I'm not sure who that is. Um, that might not even be Gren in some of those pictures, that might be like his mom, and he just looks kind of just like her, and that's him as a kid? I'm not sure. But either way, her barging in on Gren in the shower, quite a few surprises back to back to back. At first I'm like, okay, he's gonna be a woman, and then he is, and I'm like, okay, that's a pretty big shock. Then we see the tits, I'm like, oh, I didn't expect to just see them. Okay, sure, that's a shock. But then he also apparently has a penis, I guess, and he says, I am both, or I'm neither. So I guess I don't know exactly the deal is, what he's, if he has just a, a dick, if he's got both, like what exactly the deal is with him down there. But uh, again, for a show that came out, not just a show, an anime in 1998, didn't expect these kind of things to come up. But it's uh, very interesting that it did, like that one episode with the just the gay guys just in bed together, and that just happened. It's interesting to see that they have, they portrayed these things in this show from over 20 years ago. But yeah, um, we'll get more information about him, I suppose, and everything going on with Faye. Uh, things could definitely end very badly for him, which would just have an even worse effect on Faye if she gets close to him and then something bad happens to him. Uh, I assume by the end of this, they'll all be back together. Jet and Spike will reconcile in some way. Faye will come back. But I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Maybe next episode will uh, will end kind of somber. Maybe some of them will go their separate ways. They'll be on their own for a while. I don't know. Or at the very least, Faye will. Vicious, obviously, is not going to be taken care of halfway through the show. So I don't know if we'll get any more of him next time. Or if it'll just be about Spike doing other stuff. I don't know, but this was, a, like I said, this was a, a slow burn, building up tension and building up these storylines in this moody, cold place. And it was good. And I want to see where it's going to go next. So that's about all I have to say for now, I think. Uh, if you have anything you want to say about the episode, we can talk about it further in the comments below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel. New Cowboy Bebop episodes every Friday. Check out the Discord if you want to come talk, and the Patreon if you want to support the channel and get early videos. Those links are in the description below. So thank you guys, I will see you in the next one.